mic fright. So I guess to explain mic fright is <laughs> you get scared. You don't really, you don't know what to say. You don't know what you should, how you should be doing it. Okay, obviously it's all part of the test and this is the way that you should announce your call sign. This is the way, and you, and you know the theory, but putting it it's in part of your is test. Event. Is it? It's, it's not, not part, of, part of our test. No. Oh, okay. So operate. So, but you've got a mix of regulations though, but that's not covered. No, because technically there isn't, there's, there's only customary. There's not absolute requirement by law in the U S okay. on what you need to do. The, what they say it, in terms of legality is you need to identify your station every 10 minutes, but yes. I don't need to call CQ. I can, I can get on the mic and say, Hey, and, and it's fine. I mean, it, it's yeah. not customary. I mean, I can get on a repeater and I can call CQ. It's fine. It's not customary, but there isn't any actual hard and fast rule on the test over here. It's just, like I said, it's just the customs. Hmm. Okay. So I don't, I'm not entirely sure if ours is a hard and fast rule. I know that uh, we have operational procedures or operate. We. It's like the, this is the way that, operationally it works so this is how you call a station this is how you respond to a station and i we've in our exam we've even got a practical component so part i love that part yeah so part of the practical component is that you will sit down in front of a radio you'll be asked to operate it change frequency call up I th we usually use an irlp node dial an irlp node and you i think we use the club call sign so so at my local club is you'd pick up the microphone this is VK7 OTC using IRLP. You dial the node, call CQ, disconnect, whatever. So um, I guess you sort of get that initial. Uh, well, you sort of you sort of get that initial feel of what it should be like to make a contact. But I, I didn't realize that your questions that you don't you don't deal with that in your questions. That's a, that's quite surprising. Nope. So, uh, so Mike Fright, so how to get over it? Did you get it when you first got licensed? So I don't know. Cause I'm not really that kind of person. I'm I'd like, you, you give me something to do and I will go do it. If you tell me like I should do something and I have no, no desire, I just, I don't care. But if like, I wanted to be on the air, like I wanted to, to do the whole radio thing. So the minute I got my, um, my tech test passed, I keyed up my my radio and, and went for it. I knew that there was going to be some hassles. I knew there was going to be some learning curve. I knew there was going to be some problems, but it, it's amateur radio. It's not, I mean, I'm not like, you know, doing brain surgery or anything. The, the worst that can happen is I called wrong and hopefully somebody's not rude and comes back and says, you called CQ on a repeater. Get out of here, son. You know, like hopefully it's like CQ repeater, CQ repeater. And they're like, yeah, you don't do that. But here's what you do instead. You just say, and what's really even worse is when you follow the the rules of what they tell you to say. Like you say, KM9G listening on the repeater. Like they're like, yeah, I know you're listening. Don't care. Yeah. Like if you say KM9G doing a mic test, they'll go, yeah, your microphone sounds good. If you say yeah. KM9G monitoring, if you say KM9G clear, like they don't care. If you say mm -hmm. something wrong, they'll jump on you. If you talk mm -hmm. for a long time, they'll jump on you. This is a repeater and it needs to be kept clear for emergency use. So clear off. Okay. Mm. Guess who doesn't talk on the repeater anymore? You know, like I solved yeah. that problem. Not, yeah. <clears throat> Quiet for 99% <throat> of the time, but. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple of comments. Uh, the no code tech says, if you want to get over my right, watch Astralia 100%. Wonder where she learned that from. <laughs> um, and. Uh, Wild Cascade Radio Anime says, if I had an Elma, it would probably be better the Mike Fried. I mean, we're going to talk about Elmas a bit later on, so we'll uh, we will go into that. No, I don't mean to say like you know, I don't mean to downplay Mike Fright when I say what I say. What I'm what I'm trying to get at is, it's just not that important. And like Anime says, watch Astrolia, and she'll say, you know, she'll say which state is better, Illinois or Wisconsin, just as like the it's the Wisconsin, idea that's of. Easy. It, of course, being Wisconsin <laughs> natives, both of us, the um, the idea of calling CQ on HF is to put a volume of noise on the band. So when somebody's spinning the dial by, they can actually hear that you're there as opposed to just like if you said CQ KM 9G, that's a full spin and they just 
they got the G and moved on. And when they mm-hmm. tuned back, you're not there calling CQ anymore. So you want to say something relatively long winded. I mean, it sounds annoying when you're trying to actually make the contact on the other side, but there is actually a purpose for it. So, yeah. As Dan says, it's just a conversation. Um, we've, so I suppose with how did we get over it? So, for myself, I did have Mike Wright when I started on amateur radio back in 2004. I was only a 13 year old kid at the time, though. So, it was probably a little bit different. I didn't have a lot of uh, confidence. And I remember setting up, um, I remember I remember a couple of amateurs coming around to my house. So some Elmers came around and they set up an eighty meter dipole for me and said, "Right, you're good to go." Um, and <laughs> now what? To, at, well, they were like, "Let's let's test the antenna." So they get on the phone. It was in the middle of the day, so there weren't many stations on. So you got on the phone to someone um, and said, "Hey, are you around for a test?" "Yeah, cool. Okay, what frequency?" "Okay, see you there." And he just looks at me and he says. Okay, um, so we've got, uh, I can't remember what his call sign was at the time, but he said, um, such and such is going to be on this frequency. Give him a call. You and never like, forget your first, eh? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? So I picked it up and I heard him calling and I just replied and I just, all I was thinking of was, oh, I can't remember the regulations. I can't remember the way it was supposed to. And, and he could see that and he just said to me, look, he says, no one's listening. It's fine. No one else cares. Just call his, call his call sign. Say yours, give him a signal report, done. So um, that was good. It was good to have someone else there who was um, able to sort of school you through that as well. So, but I, I understand what you were saying too is we're not talking about, you know, we're not saying that mic fright is something that you shouldn't be worried about. It's just something that can be managed and you'll get over it eventually. Once you have your first couple of contacts, then you'll be, you'll be okay. So. Um, yeah, try doing a YouTube live stream while calling CQ on an HF band, to, right. <laughs> like just increase the level of pressure a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, another good way of doing it too is if there is an amateur that you trust. So maybe there's someone that if you have already joined a club or you know somebody, tee up a QSO with them in advance, and then that way you can practice on the air if you really want to. No one's going to worry about that. They're not going to. Double, they're not going to come over the top and say, oh, you're not doing this properly or have a go at you. And even if they do, who cares? But you should be able to have like, just have, yeah, have a QSO with a friend and just, just practice on air. And eventually you'll be able to yeah. talk to anybody. Contests are a good way to get over that also because the exchange is known and the signal report is fake. And if you don't get a hundred percent, so like, if you are the one, if you're the station calling Hayden and I'm the station listening, trying to respond to your call, I can just put out KM nine G five, nine Wisconsin, whatever the contest exchange is and the contest exchange, you just look it up. That's how you know what it is. Um, and then you just come back and you say, KM nine G copy five, nine, you are five, nine. Also, thanks for the contact QRZ. And I didn't catch your call sign at all. You're not going anywhere because your job is to, hold that frequency and make more contacts. So I just need to wait until I hear KD9 SSB come back. And then just now I can put it in my log. So like, you're not going to miss anything. And if, if it's not a contest and I don't hear your call sign properly, I can say uh, SSB station again, or, or the nine call, please. Or you can ask for help. I mean, and one of the, one of the classic things that OMs get afraid of um, not afraid of it. They, they get cranky about is like, uh, what was your call sign? What was your call sign? Repeat the call sign. Please repeat the call sign. I've got KD nine. What's the rest of it? All right. KD nine SSB. You are five nine. It's like, yeah, I couldn't understand your crazy Australian accent, <laughs> but I could hear you. I could hear you clearly enough to know that you were talking. It wasn't it, call signs are not easy. It's not a, it's not a word, no. you know? I mean, yours is pretty good. KD nine SSB. I mean, that's, that's, fairly easy to get Mm. but like so what it's fine yeah and um and this is the other thing too is if you struggle to hear someone on the air or vice versa if they're struggling to hear you they don't mind if you keep calling that your call sign over and over and over again because they'll be happy to get you in the log and even if they don't and they move on and i've had that times before where i've been calling someone and i can hear them plain as day and they'll be calling me and they'll be saying 
station station ending in, in I, th- I think it's hotel is i can't go and you, you'll call and call and call and eventually i'll say sorry but i can't copy you thank you 73 yep. and that's fine that's not a problem um oops oops what's that what's that sorry the band's going away sorry you can't hear you <laughs> <laughs> uh dan says i got over my mic fright by going to a part see this is the thing i don't know i could never understand dan having mic fright going to a park and called cq poda the absolute rush that came back got the adrenaline flowing and i forgot for a moment that i was scared so very very good you almost you got me doing a um new zealand accent then uh, dan scared but scared i'm scared um, Bo says, my CQ for Poda are about 10 seconds long. I wait three to five seconds to do it again. Ex- very good way to call CQ. Excellent. 